101 out of the 110 Dapchi school girls who were abducted on the 19th of February 2018 have been released. Briefing said as correspondent immediately before the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting at the Asso Presidential Villa Abuja, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed said the 101 are those who have been documented so far, adding that the release of the adopted students is ongoing. I was told that 91 girls and one boy have been documented to have been released. So it's a school, uh, it's a girl's school, when did they get I, I can tell that, that this is authentic, whether they killed the boy, I mean, I, I, I can't have that any just. But don't forget that even a girl's school, which is a boarding school, there will be parents, you know, there, will, mm -hmm. there are teachers who can have also children and much, and in the, in the, anything can happen. But, I can, but I'm just telling you what I've been told, that 92, 91 girls and one boy. The, 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 the report we got was that uh, one condition that the insurgents gave was that they would be the one to drop the girls. Alaji Lai Mohammed said the girls who were released around 3 a.m. through back China's effort and with the help of some friends of the country had no condition attached, adding that the number of freed girls would be updated after the remaining ones have been documented, especially because the girls were not handed over to anyone but dropped off in Dapchi. On her part, Minister of State Foreign Affairs Khadija Buka Abba Ibrahim, who is from Yube State, said she is happy that their efforts to release the girls have yielded the desired result. I received the news with great joy. Today I'm a very, very happy person. I think that throughout my life I haven't been this happy because the the, 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 the Dapchi girls have been brought back to their parents. The moment they're doing a roll call of all the girls. So, up until the time we actually do the roll call and ascertain how many are actually missing, we will not have a definite reply yet. Efforts are still ongoing to make sure that all kidnapped girls are released from Abuja and Festus Ejirog and Efifen for Ben Television. The Senate has screened nominee for the post of the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank. Aisha Amadou and Edward Lametek Adamu, nominees of President Muhammadu Buhari for the position in Nigerian Apex Bank, appear before the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions. The screening exercise was secret to the decision of the Upper Chamber of the National Assembly to temporarily leave the embargo place on approval of nominee or president. A decision it says it is the interest of the economy. Screening of this of the presidential nominee for the position of the deputy governor and members of monetary policy committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Today, as you may recall, the Senate of the Federal Republic at the city on Tuesday 13 March 2000 considered a matter of urgent public importance in respect of suspension of confirmation of appointment of nominees by Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and with the permission and indulgence of our colleagues, the Senate resolved to mandate the committee to commence further legislative action on the request of Mr. President to screen the following nominees. Mrs. Haisha Mohammed, Deputy Governor nominee, Mr. Edward Lamatek Adamu, Deputy Governor, Professor Adiola Festus Ade Mikiju, Member MPC, Dr. Ali Ravindadi Sanusi, Member of MPC nominee, Dr. Robert Chikwendu Asogwa, Member MPC, Dr. Ashek Maidugu, Member MPC nominee. To the Senate for uh, lifting the what appeared to be an injunction and considering this matter at this time and I, I want to really appreciate that and again I know that with the, mag with the magnanimity of the Senate you will extend this goodwill to other nominees and again and in particular that of the board members because some board members are also members of the Monetary Policy Committee. 
the center thereafter quiz Mrs. Aisha Ahmad on the number of issues geared toward repositioning the nation's alien economy, with a particular focus on how to improve the value of the Naira, among other things. Aisha Ahmad, in her response to the question, says the fundamental problem of Nigerian economy is over-independent on oil revenue. I am gratified to see that at least over the last um, 18 months or so, we've seen a steady um, stabilization in our rates. What we have, the importers and um, the investors and um, exporters window, what it has done for us is to provide some assurance, some liquidity, some transparency in that market in terms of price discovery. There's also the SME window that caters to um, businesses that are looking for funds below 20,000 that are giving them an outlet, you know, to go and access the funds. Whilst we're working on the structural issues that are more long-term in terms of diversifying our sources of FX, encouraging exporters, coming up with um, um, policies, right, that stimulate domestic production and then, you know, encourage exporters. What we'll be trying to do if, you know, and which is what I see the CBN trying to do, is to make sure that we are converging the rates. The second nominee for the position of CBN Deputy Governor, Edward Demetric Adamu, a native of Kutungo from Gombe State, have previously served in different capacity in the CBN for mandatory 35 years before retiring. The committee expressed pleasure on the quality of the nominee for the position of the Deputy Governor of the Nigerian Central Bank. Let me write for the first time by bringing one of the insiders. A very who good has one. Done well. A very good one. Who has done well, you know. Yeah. See, me, I don't fear anybody. I fear God. <laughs> you, are, you, you are very, you have done well in CPA. Thank you very much. And people like you should be encouraged. I want you to take a bow and go. <laughs> so that's the Thank motion. you. Thank you. Uh, that's the motion. Thank you. The Senate Committee also screened for nominee for the membership of the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Land Transport, Senator Olubinga Ashafa, says that the adoption of Nigeria International Tolling Association will help the country to tap into its underground space. Senator Ashafa stated this while playing oaths to the delegation of International Tolling and Underground Space Association and Nigerian Tolling Association at National Assembly Complex, Abuja. He said Nigeria does not have tunnel because infrastructure attitude does not tap into the immense possibility of underground space. The center called for synergy to improve capacity, technology transfer that will help more civil and structural engineers to gain expertise in taking on the underground space. Considering the advancement that has been experienced in this industry in so many countries of the world. Tunneling is almost a virgin space in Nigeria. Not because we do not have any tunnels, but because our infrastructural architecture and drive has refused to tap into the immense possibilities of our underground spaces. My hope is that with the adoption of Nigeria as the fourth, 74th member state of the International Tunneling Association and the passion of the Tunneling Association of Nigeria a synergy for capacity development and technology transfer will be established. This will enable more civil and structural engineers gain expertise and knowledge so that we have the skilled labor force to take on the underground space. Earlier, President Nigerian Tolling Association Abidemi Ago called on the Senate to critical look into development of tolling in the land transportation in Nigeria. Everything that was done, they had to pass a bill 
um, that looked at um, the pre-construction, construction and post-construction impact of, of developing the infrastructure. Because, uh, of, of course, um, London, especially the central part of London, is densely populated and a lot of um, high-end assets. And for the, to be able to mitigate the, the um, outfalls of damages potentially, which sometimes you can't, you know, you would always encounter, that had to be considered as well. Um, in, in the act. So this is, is something that goes just beyond um, the process of um, revenue at the end of the contract, but also during the construction phase. It, it, it's something that can also cover the, all, um, all, all the, um, the, the phases and everything that has to do with the construction. The delegation of international touring and underground space was led by Tassio Celestino from National Assembly Complex Abuja. Muyu Abamdili reporting. Contrary to media reports that the sum of nine million US dollars was recovered from the home of former special advisor on Niger Dental Affairs in a report Boro retired, the retired general has de described the report as fake, malicious, and defaming. Speaking through his legal counsel, Olusholaoke, a senior advocate of Nigeria in a media briefing in Abuja, General Boro asked the media organization involved in the report to quickly retract the malicious story to avoid further legal actions. The front page publication in today's this day, which was also uh, re echoed or carried in some other section of the press, reporting that nine million US dollars was recovered from the house and premises of my client in the course of the search conducted by the EFCC operatives sometime. On Monday. The family has been very worried. I've received calls from his friends who know that I am his counsel in this matter. And uh, based on the calls I received, I've made contact with my client and I've also made contact with family, especially his wife. All confirmed to me that this news or this publication is totally false, without basis, a fabrication which has disparaged my client in no small measure. No such sum or any sum of money was found or recovered by the operatives after their long-lasting, extensive search on his house and premises. Ulusha okay, also stated that the ESCC has denied releasing such information to any section of the media, but tracing their suspicion that the story must have been planted to score cheap political points. We have our client's instruction to invite this day the AIT, which also re-echoed the publication in the, this day, and other media houses or print or electronic that have carried this news to retract it because it is not true. And if they have their evidence that it is true, then to come forward and justify it to the public so that we have instruction from our client to take further steps if this is not done in the next 48 hours. We have also made contact with the EFCC and they have also confirmed that at no time did they pass us information to any media house that they never claim to the public. They have their own mode of operation. If they make such discovery, normally they will invite, invite the press and brief them. They will take photographs that they have not done so, which means that the publication also was not based on any information from the EFCC. Even from the right of what we read there is that EFCC confirmed arrest of our client, which we also confirmed to you. As I speak with you, he is still in the custody of the EFCC. And we are not bothered because once there's an allegation, there's bound to be investigation. On her part, wife of the embattled retired general, Mrs. Ibiye Boro, 
who confirmed that their home was searched and her husband in custody of the EFCC, stated clearly that no such amount was found while the search lasted. My attention has been drawn to the publication in some section of the Nigerian media, media particularly the front page of this day newspaper, to the fact that nine million American dollars were recovered by the operatives of the EFCC from our house and premises in the course of their search. This is to inform the general public that no cash was discovered and could have been discovered by government operatives during their search in our house last Monday, 19th March 2018. The publication by a section of the press stating the contrary is fabricated, false in its entirety, malicious, and calculated to mislead the general public. Our family feels embarrassed and harassed and therefore request the authors to retract the same. It will be recalled that President Muhammadu Buhari last week sat the embattled general and ordered a full investigation into the activities of the presidential amnesty program on the Buru from Abuja and Festus Ejirog and Efife for Ben Television. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, has cautioned the newly inaugurated board's chairman and members of government agencies and prostitutes against indulging in any act of corrupt practices, when the federal government will not hesitate to punish anyone found guilty. Mustafa warned that the present administration has zero tolerance for any form of corruption, saying that the development must not be compromised in any way. The SGF gave the warning while inaugurating the governing board of three agencies under the office of the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, in Abuja. That the management should be allowed to execute its day-to-day -day activities without undue interferences by the boards. Let me, at this point, reiterate the determination of this administration to succeed in the fight against corruption. In carrying out your responsibility, as board members, you must therefore eschew corruption totally as government will not hesitate to sanction all infractions. Responding on behalf of the newly inaugurated board members, Mr. Ignatius Longjam promised to put their best to ensure that the Buhari led administration succeed in its mandate. Leadership is said to be a trust and a divine responsibility. On behalf of my colleagues, I want to pray to the Almighty God that this opportunity that has been given to us, we want to definitely appreciate it. And Almighty God to give us wisdom to discharge our individual responsibility, especially in areas of our speciality, specialization of various responsibilities. The board inaugurated includes National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, National Boundary Commission, and Border Communities Development Agency. 
it would be recalled that President Muhammad Buhari had replaced the late Senator John Shagaya with a former Deputy Governor of Plateau State, Mr. Ignatius Longjam, as Chairman of NIPS. In Abuja, LM Chukomika reports. The Federal Ministry of Justice as well as the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development has renewed their commitment to the passage of the Nigerian Disability Bill into law. Also committed to the cause was the National Human Rights Commission which says the issues of disability touch on its core mandate to ensure that the rights of all Nigerians as well as of other foreign nationals resident in the country were not trampled upon. The parties made the pledge at a one-day stakeholders forum on Nigerian Disability Bill, organized by Center for Citizens with Disabilities, CDD with support from the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA. It is estimated that over 25 million Nigerians are currently living with one form of disability or another. At the forum, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Justice Reform, Barrister Juliet Ndukako, who was represented by Suleiman Daudu, of the Federal Ministry of Justice said the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, was not averse to bill. He said it was the utmost wish of the Ministry to see to the passage of the bill into law to give most physically challenged Nigerians a sense of belonging. Also speaking, the representative of the Ministry of Women Affairs, Honna Uche, said the Ministry is in full support of the bill. I just wanted to clarify the fact that uh, what perhaps may have transpired in the past, in the, in the last regime, uh, that was, we, uh, I personally was not aware what challenges, what were the impediments that the, enabled the, uh, the president not to accept. Uh, but I can give assurance that as far as the Federal Ministry of Justice as at present time, uh, we are very focused on the uh, support for the disabled rights. I think the basic thing is awareness creation and then sensitization, both on the part of the government and also on the part of uh, the generality of Nigerians on the contents and the, 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 the issues they the deal. And with the, the hope that the jingles and then the, the documentary, all these things will at least go a long way in trying to satisfy the public and then Nigerians from the, the essence of the bill. Jumoke Olawe from the Legal Department of the National Human Rights Commission said it was the responsibility of the Commission to ensure that disabled Nigerians were not discriminated against. In ensuring that uh, human rights is everybody, you know, human rights is not only for the part four, part two is also part of human rights. So the Commission has divided some of us into thematic area. And I'm happy to inform you that even the people living with disability is a thematic area in Nigerian Human Rights Commission. And the head of that thematic area is present, Mrs. Akimotibi. She's also here. And then I'm sure she has been working so seriously concerning the issue of disability. When they bring about disability issues or complaints, they attend to it immediately. They don't want any delay at all, and the commission does not even permit that. And that is one of the things that the Commission is doing right now. And we, are, we have always been doing and we are not going to relent in our effort in making sure that people with disabilities are not discriminated. Highlighting the essence of the forum, the Executive Director of Center for Citizens with Disabilities, David Ayanle, said the people were hopeful that the bill will soon be passed by the National Assembly, having secured the commitment of all the appropriate authorities. The reason why people of this in Nigeria are so excited about this disability bill is that it's going to open space. It's going to trigger responsibility. And it's also going to draw the concern of all in ensuring that no one is left behind in development. You may ask, what does this bill promote? It promotes equal opportunity, yes. practical participation, yes. access to education, access to you know, healthcare services. And these are the basic ingredients that support every Nigerian to participate in the community 
on a poor basis with others. Therefore, it becomes imperative that we, the people of Nigeria, the beneficiaries, our supporters, to join hands together to ensure that the safety bill is signed into law. In as much as there is ability in disability, the importance of men and women with disabilities cannot be overemphasized. They deserve rights to life, good social amenities, education, basic needs. Beneficiaries and supporters must join hands to ensure passage of the bill into law to be sure that no one is left behind or some ruffle mental vision.